Hey there, I am a wedding photographer that photographs wedding days with prime lenses, which means that I have a lot of tools at my disposal. It also means that I have to switch my lenses out constantly. And so I have to have a system for organizing which lenses I have when and in what bag. I'm gonna teach you my system that allows me to be efficient while shooting so that you can do the same. Hey there, I'm Caitlin and I am so glad that you have found my YouTube channel. This is a place where I love to educate and empower photographers to build profitable and purposeful businesses while also letting people into the behind the scenes of our everyday life. I am so excited to talk about the topic of lenses, when I use them, how I store them, and how I organize my day. So on a wedding day, I'm not floundering around looking for different lenses. I have a system and it works and allows me to not be stressed. I know exactly what I need for each part of the wedding day and I'm gonna break that down for you right now. Okay, so let's get started with my bags. I need to explain to you exactly what gear we use to get everything to the wedding and what I use during the day to actually carry my gear around as I'm shooting. So this is the Think Tank Airport bag. It basically has been redone multiple times. A lot of the versions are very similar. It's a 2.0, there's now a 3.0, but it carries and holds everything gear-wise. So whether it's all of our lenses, all of our backup bodies, our main shooting bodies, our batteries, our flashes, everything fits in this bag. So when we leave our house for a wedding day, everything is in here. When we, when we travel for a destination shoot, everything is in here. Um, now, this is something that we use as kind of like the home base for our gear during the wedding day because I don't carry this around everywhere with me as I'm shooting. That would really hinder what I'm able to do, how I'm able to move and catch um, candid moments with our, our couples. I wouldn't be able to do that if I was lugging around something like this. This is literally the size of a small suitcase. And so I have another bag that we take we literally put this in the um, back of our van when we go to wedding days and it is empty, but it's prepped and ready to go with other things like the printed timeline, the questionnaire, all the behind the scenes, like tied to go pin. That's a whole nother video, but I prep this bag, but don't carry my gear in it until we get to the wedding day. And then we open this up and start packing for the day. This is the Kelly Moore Kelly boy bag. Now this exact model is not available anymore, but they have recently redone it to the Kelly boy bag 2.0. I don't have one of those, but I do know that this has served me well probably for the last eight years. I've done two different versions. Um, so one, I just used it so much it started disintegrating. Um, and it's not because it's a low quality bag, it's because I literally just used it to death. So I got another one before they discontinued this version and it holds everything I need. Plus I can actually fit a Canon Mark IV uh, camera body into this pocket. So I always have a backup camera body with me in case mine just completely craps out. It's one of the main reasons I love this bag is because I can have all of my emergency essentials in this pocket and I can have a backup camera body in this pocket and then this is used to house all of my mini lenses. Okay, so now that I've explained to you the purpose of these two bags, I'm gonna break down the wedding day step-by-step step into different sections and tell you what I use in each section. So which lenses are for which part of the day and why I choose those lenses. So let's start with pre-ceremony. So pre-ceremony um, is basically all the time from the moment we arrive at the venue and get started with bridal details and the bride in her bridal suite, groom and groomsman, um, that time frame, I use the same lenses from that time frame all the way until before the ceremony. And let me explain what those lenses are. It's a 50 millimeter 1.2, it's a 100 millimeter 2.8 macro, it's the 85 1.4 um, lens, and which is my favorite, and then the 35 1.4. And there are reasons why I use these all the time. It's a lot to carry in a bag, my bag's heavy. Um, so why do I need to have all of these? Well, a um, few things. One, these lenses are carrying me through photographing a lot of different things. So I'm photographing bridal details, right? So that um, 100 millimeter macro, 2.8, I have to have that at the beginning of the day because I'm doing ring shots, I'm doing tight jewelry shots. I need macro capabilities for that part of the day. Normally, that's the only time that I'm using this lens, but it's a must have, I have to have that lens. My 50 millimeter is the most versatile lens that I can use for practically the entire wedding day. But the reason why I have that paired with the 85 and the 35, uh, is because for my style, I know that I love the look of the 85 and I don't even really use the 85 unless I'm in a large bridal suite where I have some distance or when I'm doing a first look and I wanna stand back and then I start using it for portraits. And if you know anything about me, maybe you've seen the video that I did, the episode about the 85, I just love the look of that lens. It defines my style in a way that no other lens has. So I have to have that lens with me all day long, just in case I get a lot of opportunity to pull it out and use it. 
The 35 1.4 is my wide angle lens. So if a bride is getting ready in a hotel room, for example, that's a little bit tight, it's a standard hotel room, it's not a suite, um, you know, it's not a penthouse level, then if I wanna get her full dress, if her stepping into her gown and the um, bridesmaids zipping up and fluffing the bottom, if I wanna get that full shot, I have to have this lens with me or else I can't fit everyone in with my 50 millimeter. Um, I have also found that my 35 millimeter is great for when I'm doing a first look and maybe there's two big oak trees and they're meeting in the middle in front of a beautiful house. Um, I want that wide look. I want to be able to capture that wide look. And I have to have my 35 because I just don't have that epic width uh, with my 50 millimeter. So I use the macro at the beginning of the day, bridal details, all right? And then I transition into alternating between the 50 and the 35. So if I have a lot of space in the bridal suite, that is when I do the 85. And a lot of times my 85 shots in the bridal suite um, are a lot of the bride putting her earrings on and looking down, and it's just a crop vertical shot of her really tightly like that. Um, but I will use that during the bridal getting ready period. Then once the first look happens, this kind of comes out of the picture. It still stays in this bag, but I'm not using it. And I'm alternating through my main portrait lenses, um, which you've heard me talk about before probably, if you've ever heard me talk about gear. But these three lenses have defined my work and my portrait style um, more than any other equipment. So I have found after, after 12 years of shooting that this, this is like my little family of portrait lenses that I love and I just can't live without. So before we dive into the ceremony setup, what is actually in my bag, I do wanna say that this bag, because it's so heavy, um, I am not a shooter that walks around and shoots with this bag across my shoulder. I'm always carrying this bag with this and I'm setting it down really close to me so I can pop back, grab a lens and then really quickly change it and move on. Um, um, I am not carrying this on my body constantly. It's kind of like something I, I pick up and I move and I set down so that I have complete freedom to move around and be really versatile and flexible in the angles, whether I'm squatting or standing or moving with the couple. I can't have this bag attached to me. Um, it just works for me. I've done it this way for over a decade. So when it's ceremony time, normally the first look, those portraits happen, um, bridal party has happened in a lot of cases, and I will come to the ceremony location and Michael normally already has, um, his bag is all prepped and this bag is hiding off into the distance, but he's already ready for me with the 135. So the 135 is my preferred lens to use during the ceremony because it's a prime lens. It has a longer focal length, but it's not lugging this thing around. So Michael will take this into his bag. So I will replace my macro lens from the morning with the 135 and my bag will stay like this throughout the entire ceremony and really until we get to the reception. Because when I think about it, yes, I only use my 135 during the ceremony, but there's no other swap that needs to happen because I still always in my bag have a 50, 85, and a 35. So during the ceremony, when the processional is happening, there are a lot of determining factors uh, that allow me to process, okay, what lens should be best? But normally for a processional, I'm only debating between these two. Um, so obviously the 135 is too zoomed in for the processional, and I even think the 85 is too slow and too zoomed in. Um, it's, it's too long of a focal length for um, the processional. So I'm just debating between the 50 millimeter and the 35. And what determines that is how long the aisle is and also how dark of a space we're in. If we're in a pretty dark space with, but a really long aisle, um, normally a really long aisle would mean I could use my 50 millimeter because I have plenty of time and, and plenty of chances to capture the bride and her father walking down the aisle and then turn and get the groom. Um, but if it's a dark church um, or dark building with a long aisle, then I know that it's going to be harder for my 50 millimeter to focus accurately and my 35 millimeter is a much faster lens. So I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to use my 35 millimeter. So once the processional happens, normally I step over to the side and I am able to see the view of the groom looking at his bride and I'll use the 135 to capture some tight shots automatically of him looking at her lovingly. Maybe there's a few tears. I normally stay to the um, to the left hand side of the ceremony until I capture at least one one or two photos where I know it's a great shot of him looking at her really zoomed in with the 135 and then I make my way to the back. So normally I step back and I get a wide shot of the entire church or the entire setting. I want to get the view. I want to get all the chairs show kind of like a setting shot, a wide setting shot of the actual ceremony. And I'm going to use my 35 for that. Um, and then once I get that wide shot, I'm not really using my 35 millimeter again um, until potentially the very end of the recessional. Um, so what happens after we get the wide shot? Well, then I start focusing on getting some really great shots that are somewhat tight of the bride and groom standing facing each other holding hands. So this would be um, maybe rings and vows when they're looking at each other 
intently and there it's a really great picture from this like straight back view from the aisle i will use my 135 i will also use the 85 millimeter if um, it's a shorter aisle i would prefer the 85 millimeter over the 135 um, if i can get close enough with it without being a distraction uh, and so then once it's time for the kiss a lot of times um, i will get a little bit closer. A lot of times there's like a prayer and then a kiss. Um, not in every ceremony, but in some. So I will a lot of times get a little bit closer. All right. I wait for the kiss and I'm either shooting with, and it really, it depends on the setting because if the aisle is super long or the church is, you know, it's a Catholic cathedral and, it, and it's super long aisle, everything is different then. I'd use the 135 for a kiss. And then once they come halfway down the aisle, I'm switching to a 35 millimeter and I'm walking pretty close to them as they're recessing. So everything is very different. But in general, I normally do a tighter, more zoomed in lens for the kiss and make sure I get like the you know, pronouncement, their hands are in the air, woo, and then they start walking and I'm switching to a 35 millimeter or a 50 millimeter. It is safest to do a 35 millimeter because they're normally happy, they're moving fast, and that's my fastest lens. So that kind of gives you an outline of how I use different lenses during the ceremony. All right, so now we're moving on to reception. And I wanna just be clear that I'm gonna divide reception up into two halves. So it's the reception events. So, you know, when they walk in, they make their entrance. We have toast, we have dancing, we have cake cutting, all that. Um, that requires kind of a different setup and a different approach to my gear. Then once we switch over to party dancing and that's the way it's gonna be for the rest of the night. All right, so the reception events part of the day, um, I'm walking into the reception space and it's gonna be different no matter what, if it's a white tent and the sun is still high in the sky, you know, I'm probably not gonna need a flash, but for the most part, majority of the time, um, especially for indoor venues. I am going into the reception space with both off-camera flashes already set up. Michael does that. Um, and then I'm walking into that space. Michael will hand me a flash to put on my camera and I will leave it there for the rest of the evening. And the reason why I do that is because it just doesn't seem worth it to take it off and put it back in my bag when I never know when someone's going to come up in a bad badly lit place and say, hey, I really need a portrait with this group of people. And then I always have my flash on camera ready to take that shot. So what lenses do I use? The biggest shift that happens during this part um, is honestly during toast. So whether it's cake cutting or it's dances or it's um, the entrance, those are normally a different combination of different lenses based on the scenario. So if we're in a big ballroom and they're super far away and I don't want to block everyone standing super close to the door, then I might use my 50 or even a 24 to 70 to capture the entrances when everyone's walking and moving. I don't know about you, but I hate it when all of a sudden you don't realize where the bridal party is going to do their fancy little, their little dances or like their little like cute things they do together. You're like, oh my gosh, you were supposed to do that when you walked in, but they did it on the dance floor. And sometimes it can be a little bit of a panic. So sometimes a 24 to 70 is a great lens for entrances because you have some flexibility in being able to zoom in. That also, however, affects your amount of light. So you have to adjust your settings in order to compensate for using that lens that is not prime. So I will have my 24 to 70 available. I will, it depending on light, um, sometimes I like to have, if there's a lot of light, Michael will have the 24 to 70 and I will be shooting with like a 50 millimeter or a 35. So it really does depend on the venue and what the space looks like. But um, having the 24 to 70 readily, readily available for entrances is super helpful and the 35 because they're super fast. Um, but then we move on to things like dances. And so for dances, I like to use a variety uh, of normally one or two lenses. So I like to have a full shot. We can see like the whole room and like mom and dad or um, the bride and her dad and the bride and groom and then the groom and his mom. I like being able to have like a setting shot, like with a 35 and then switch to more like um, a 50 or an 85. Now using the 50 or the 85, um, I determine that by whether or not I think the bride and her dad or the bride and groom or the bride and his mom are going to be fast dancers or not. And so the whole uh, dancing thing where like it starts slow and then they go crazy, very frustrating for a photographer uh, because you don't anticipate that that's coming. You think you know, like, oh, it's a slow paced song. They're moving so sweetly and I have my 85 on, I'm getting these tight shots. And then all of a sudden they're doing crazy dancing. I know that I got to run and get my 35 or my 24 to 70, depending on light. So dances are kind of, you know, it's a free for all. Sometimes they are so slow and it's such a mild, like slow tempo dance that I can use my 85 during the whole thing and it's perfect. And then sometimes I need to use my 50 and sometimes it's so fast paced, I only use my 35 and I actually step out a little closer to them on the dance floor in order to get a little bit um, closer to them and not have such a large distance. So 
I can't tell you this is my lens for dances because I literally switch it up so much depending on the scenario. But let's talk about toast because this is another way that my bag kind of changes. When it comes to toast, I actually have found if it, if it allows for um, the space in the distance, if it's not a super tight space, I do love, even though this is not, not my favorite lens, I do love the flexibility of using this lens. I love capturing emotion with it. Um, I love capturing, um, parents laughing at their table, you know, listening to one of their siblings, give a toast to their older sibling or younger sibling. That that's a really sweet interaction. Like at, at my children's wedding, like I want someone to capture Michael and I smiling and crying and laughing with our kids, toasting one another. Like that's very, very special. And I can't get that effect or that look all the time based off of arrangement of the room and lighting. But if I can, I use this during toast. So that means that I need to have this readily available. It does not mean, however, that I use this lens and I keep it in my bag and I tote it around the reception to all the events. Normally when toasts are announced, I will go to this bag that Michael's already taken his gear out of and kind of packed up here um, because he really only needs a 24 to 70 during the reception. Um, I will go and I'll get this out of the bag and have it on hand. So I'm not walking around with this in my bag during the entire reception. Um, so that is kind of how I handle events. Cake cutting, again, there's no one lens. If I'm right up next to him, I'll use a 35. If they're out in the middle of the dance floor, I'll use an 85. So there's not a defined lens for every single event because every single event is in different lighting and a different setting with different distance. But those are the lenses that I use and I need to have for events on hand. So I want to have my 35. I want to have my 50. I want to have my 70 to 200 for toast. I also want to have this uh, 24 to 70 in case entrances or fast paced and kind of crazy. Um, so I, I like having the flexibility of having all those lenses, but now we're gonna transition into the party dancing side of the reception. So the lenses that I prefer to use during this part of the wedding day would be my 24 to 70 2.8 um, or my 35 1.4. And so determining between these two lenses depends a lot on light. Um, if it were in a really dark room, you know, like a kind of like chestnut wood color walls and a dark ceiling, and it's really hard, maybe a dark barn, um, and it's really hard to get even my flashes to create enough glow and ambient light to make my images look bright and airy like I love to have them look. Um, I'm going to choose a 35 millimeter. Now, if I have a lot of good bounce light and I feel like I'm, I'm really feeling like I've got my off-camera flash in, uh, in great places, then I'll use my 24 to 70 because I feel like I can still get bright images and this gives me more flexibility um, in how I can zoom in and capture um, different people dancing at different distances. So, what does this look like as far as my bag? Well, normally I'd have one or the other still in my bag. When I'm using this, I'll have this in the bag, obviously. Now, what happens to all of the other stuff? During party dancing is actually when Michael will start packing this bag up. Because I know even if there's a group shot, I'll use a 35 millimeter. But there's no reason unless I did nighttime portraits with my bride and groom, which is not necessarily a regular occurrence. Um, I don't really need my 50 millimeter or my 85 millimeter. And it's not like I can't get them. Um, they're in this bag, but Michael will start the process of getting this um, prepped and ready to go. But also it allows me not to have so much heaviness in my bag and it makes us feel like our gear, the majority of our gear um, is protected somewhere in a back room um, in this bag. So, so I'm really glad that you tuned in for this. I hope it's helpful. I hope you realize maybe if you're just getting into photography, you might be overwhelmed, like thinking, oh my gosh, I don't have all these lenses. I don't even know where to start. We actually have a video that's linked below um, where you can hear me talk through the order in which I think you should build your lens collection. And also just know this is a, a, a process. Um, I did not have all of my lenses when I first started. I had to work towards the, every wedding I shot, I had a little fund that would grow and grow until I could afford to buy and, and purchase a new lens to add to the collection. So this is a process, but it's also a process um, that as you add a new lens to your collection, even though it's exciting to have a new piece of gear, as you can tell, you have to know how to make decisions as to what you should use and when you should use it. And so I hope that this video was helpful. We have so many other videos talking about um, my favorite portrait lens ever, which is my 85, which is a part of the trifecta. These are my, my babies. I need them for every part of what I do, my 50, my 85, and my 35. Uh, and so we have a lot of other videos that are talking and speaking to gear and equipment and um, lens reviews. And I just hope that they will be helpful to you. But also if we do more videos in the future, when we do more videos in the future, I want you to be able to be a part of them and learn and grow from them. So be sure you subscribe and like below. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.